What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE stars who actually benefited from injuries. Sometimes an injury can happen to a wrestler, and you may think, oh, it's gonna derail their push, they're not gonna be as over, you know. It, 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 it may it, it looks like it, it may be the end of their or their potential title run or whatever the situation may be and sometimes there's something creative that happens and they're able to turn that injury into maybe a storyline or maybe into something else that can get that potential wrestler over and during the time being while they're injured so you know it, it all comes down to who uh how creative they can get in the back when it when things like this happen but we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel let's get right into this one injuries and professional wrestling go hand in hand and are an assumed hazard of being a wwe superstar mm -hmm. and while nobody ever wants to suffer one injuries don't always have to be bad news either for the unfortunate performer who gets injured or another star who may be able to benefit from it yep. whether it's a push storyline big match match or even title run, there have been some WWE stars who took advantage of an absence, including their own, even if they didn't truly realize it was positive at the time. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 WWE stars who benefited from injuries. Mm -hmm. Join us. But first, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends injuries and a high-profile departure leaving the blue brand bereft of main event talent. Brock Lesnar famously quit the company to try out for football while Kurt Angle was out with yet more neck trouble. Mm -hmm. Big Show, meanwhile, could soldier on through the post-WrestleMania tour of Europe, but he desperately needed knee surgery and would also be MIA for several months. It left the company, as well as WWE champion Eddie Guerrero, in a difficult spot, not helped much by a disappointing draft just eight days after the showcase of the Immortals. Rather than move a top star over from Raw, WWE decided to repackage existing mid-carder Bradshaw, who transformed from beer-loving barroom brawler to Latino-loathing stock market whiz JBL. Mm -hmm. It was a stark and sudden change, but WWE were all in on John Bradshaw Layfield, who prior to the headliner crisis was going through the motions alongside Ron Simmons in the dependable APA. JBL not only got a huge push and pay-per-view main event opposite Guerrero, but dethroned him for the title in the rematch, kicking off a 280-day reign that wouldn't have happened had the next big thing, Olympic hero, and world's largest athlete all been available. Damn, Number 9, Kofi Kingston. Oh, if yeah. a talented, popular world... Yeah, this one right here was right place, right time. It just sucks because... Uh... Uh, Mustafa, uh, Mustafa uh, Ali, he he was supposed to be slated in this spot, but he ended up getting injured, and that's when I believe he ended up taking the eliminate. He 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 replaced him in the elimination chamber, which which he ended up getting over in. Like Kofi was always over, but he got even more over because people were really starting to get behind him, and it's crazy. An injury pretty much catapulted and started the Kofi mania situation which is so insane when you really think about it of course who perhaps doesn't get many opportunities at the top level goes down with an injury before a major match the ideal scenario would be replacing him with another talented popular workhorse who perhaps doesn't get many opportunities at the top level days before he was scheduled to compete for the mm -hmm. wwe title in the titular match at 2019's elimination chamber mustafa ali suffered a concussion at a non-televised live event ruling him out. Mm -hmm. Smackdown stars like Rey Mysterio, Andrade, Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev were picked to round out the field in his place, but the nod ultimately went to Kofi Kingston. The New Day man impressed everyone in the gauntlet match to determine who entered the chamber last, and while he wasn't successful, his performance in the match and the swell of crowd support that greeted it convinced yep. WWE to change direction. Kofi came up short at the pay-per-view with Daniel Bryan retaining his title, but his efforts and popularity once again caused WWE to change course. Kingston got another crack at the gold at WrestleMania, winning the match moment. in one of the best feel-good moments was, in WWE history. Moment, it was fate and an unfortunate concussion to a co-worker that took him there. Mm -hmm. Number 8, Triple H. When Triple H tore his quad in the main event of the May 21st, 2001 episode of Raw, he must have thought that it happened at the 
worst possible time. The game had been on a serious roll that year, and there's no doubt another run with the WWE title was in his near future. After all, he was in the middle of a run teaming with WWE Champion Steve mm -hmm. Austin, and there's simply no way that Stone Cold and the Cerebral Assassin would be able to coexist forever. While Triple H missed out on the best part of a year, including major pay-per-views like SummerSlam and Survivor Series, his absence was actually a blessing in disguise. Yep, and that's worked. because Hunter missed the entirety of the messy invasion storyline and managed to rehab himself that's in time. That's crazy. I forgot he wasn't a part of that. He was not a part of the whole invasion storyline. He, he was out with injury. And then when he came back, it was just that pop he got was ridiculous. <laughs> for a return right around the Royal Rumble. His layoff, coupled with the inspirational vignette showing how hard he worked to get back into the ring, helped fans forget that he was a hated heel when he mm -hmm. went away and transformed him into the biggest babyface in the company. Yep. The pop he received when he returned at Madison Square Garden Where's said ridiculous. it all, and he really was the only choice to win the Rumble and go on to main event WrestleMania. Number 7, Dolph Ziggler. WWE were all aboard the Roman Reigns train in 2014, choo choo, big dog coming through, and if everything <laughs> had gone according to plan, he would have been the featured performer in the Survivor Series main event. It was all set up for Reigns to thwart the authority in the traditional oh, elimination tag match, was but dark. Roman was forced onto the sidelines after he had to undergo emergency hernia surgery a couple of months before I that. forgot it was Dolph that was, was the one that <laughs> pretty much, uh, he, he pretty much was like the one that got even though Dolph, Dolph was one of those people where the fans loved him. It's just we knew management weren't going to really, I guess, push him to those to the lengths where we would want him to be at. So him being one of the people on the Survivor team, Survivor Series team that year, and I think he was like the last man standing in the crowd getting really over, like, well, really getting behind him once again. It was a cool moment to see. I believe this In is his that place moment. stepped Dolph Ziggler, who briefly inherited Roman's push out of the blue. Mm -hmm. While the show-off didn't go on to win the Royal Rumble or headline WrestleMania or anything like that, Reigns was back in time to do all of that stuff, his career did experience an upsurge toward the end of 2014. This was especially evident at Survivor Series, where Dolph eliminated Kane, Luke Harper, yep. and Seth Rollins to finish the match as sole survivor with a timely assist from mm -hmm. Sting. That was such Ziggler a great had moment. real momentum coming out of the show too, carrying him to an intercontinental title triumph over Harper at TLC the following month. Number 6, no, Kevin Owens. Got, got Finn Balor and Seth Rollins were given the opportunity to write their names in the WWE history books when they met to determine the yep. first ever Universal Champion at SummerSlam 2016. And this moment right here is special to me because it happened in Houston, Texas, bro. Oh man. Uh, just to... I'm going to let him explain for those who don't know, but if you know, you know. Oh, man, this was a great moment. After a hard-fought, brilliant battle, it was Balor who prevailed, putting Rollins away with the coup de grace to become the inaugural champ. It was a big moment for Balor, winning his first WWE main roster title in the semi-main event of one of the company's biggest shows of the year. The next night on Raw, Finn was forced to relinquish the title as a result of an injury sustained during the match the previous evening. Mm -hmm. Then, the following week, Kevin Owens won a four-way to determine a new Universal oh, Champion, so good, besting bro. Rollins, Roman Reigns, Such and Big moment. Cass. At SummerSlam, the prize fighter had been in the opener, tagging with Chris Jericho against Cass and Enzo Amore, and now, just over a week later, he was the top dog on the red brand. It kicked off a stellar six or so months for KO, and it might not have happened had Balor not mm -hmm. needed surgery. And the crazy thing is, like I said, it's, it's one of my favorite endings to a Monday Night Raw, bro. Hearing the Houston crowd, it happened in Houston, Texas, hearing the Houston crowd chanting, you deserve it, oh, it was such a beautiful moment, bro. Oh, my God, that was such a great moment to hear the crowd chanting, you deserve it, as uh, Monday Night Raw went off the air when he won the championship. So cool. Number five, Randy Orton. 
Randy Orton's WWE career seemed to be going from strength to strength as the year 2002 wore on. The third generation star was clearly loaded with potential, and a switch from SmackDown to Raw, accompanied by a stronger push, signaled that the company had bigger plans for him. Regrettably, Orton injured his famously dodgy shoulder after just two matches on the flagship show. Mm -hmm. It could have been a serious momentum halter, but WWE decided to keep young Randy on the television RNN. in the form of his <laughs> RNN update. The weekly Randy News Network segments allowed the legend killer to not only retain a presence on Raw, but also to show that he actually had some decent charisma and personality by having him lean into his naturally heelish demeanor. Mm -hmm. Interrupting the matches or segments of other stars, RNN provided fans with information on how Orton's recovery <laughs> was going directly from the man himself. As the weeks wore on, Randy got more and more arrogant, gradually turning him heel. This led to Orton returning proper as a member of evolution, something that might not have been accepted if he had stayed healthy and continued yeah. with the clean-cut babyface rookie shtick instead. That's crazy. Number four, Zack Ryder. Of all the times to get injured, doing so right before you're about to make your WrestleMania debut ranks up there as one of the least ideal and most crushing. Poor Neville was just a few weeks away from appearing in the Intercontinental title ladder match at Mania 32 when a routine baseball slide resulted in an ankle fracture that put him on the shelf Jeez. for the best part of the rest of the year. Filling in for Neville was the unlikely Zack Ryder, the hard-working but long-suffering jobber to the stars who spent most of his time on superstars and main events mm -hmm. before being drafted in as a substitute. Nobody gave the prospect of Long Island IC actually winning the thing much nope. credence, of course, assuming that he was merely there to make up the numbers. Incredibly, though, Ryder ended up holding the IC title at the end of it and Which got to celebrate crazy. his huge unexpected title win in that the ring with his moment. dad after. Yes, he lost it to The Miz the very next night on Raw, Which but the scary. win gave Zack a <laughs> genuine WrestleMania moment and allowed him to call himself a former Intercontinental mm -hmm. Champion, regardless of the brevity of his reign. Yeah. Number three, Shawn Michaels. Ah, Shawn Michaels and injuries. There's a history there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. During the 90s, the Heartbreak Kid routinely forfeited titles, including the WWE title itself, when he suffered devastating setbacks like a lost smile. Sometimes Sean benefited from these dubious injuries, sometimes his mates did. But sometimes Michaels really was crocked and others moved into his spot. HBK has also been the beneficiary when others have gotten hurt, including his DX partner and best pal Triple H. When the game blew out his other quad just a few months before WrestleMania 23, WWE's plans for the granddaddy of them all went out the window. Hunter was due to clash with WWE Champion John Cena in a rematch from the year before, mm -hmm. but the injury meant that he would be out until the summer. So who better than Mr. WrestleMania himself to step up and ensure big match John had a- That was, that was a good match. That was a fun match. I, I don't think anyone would have been, you know, would have complained if John dropped the title to Sean for one more, one more time for him, Sean, to be the WWE champ. Just one more go, man. I think a lot of us wanted that to happen. But either way, they had they had a good rivalry on Raw. Uh, this was a good match. Good feud. Enjoyed this feud. A banger. Slotting in seamlessly, the showstopper helped carry the feud an eventual match, closing out Mania for the first time in three years for what turned out to be a record-breaking show. Number mm -hmm. two, Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin was on an unstoppable path to the top of the WWE mountain when his career almost ended in the blink of an eye. Owen Hart's botched sit-out Tombstone Piledriver in their match at SummerSlam 1997 left the Texas Rattlesnake fearing paralysis, but luckily he was able to regain his faculties and somehow avoid surgery, at least for another couple of years. But make no mistake about it, Austin's neck was seriously messed up and he wouldn't be able to wrestle for a few months. Adding insult to injury, he would have to forfeit the tag team and intercontinental titles too. Not to worry though, because Stone Cold could still raise a fair amount of hell without putting on his boots and mm -hmm. trunks. WWE were not about to take one of their hottest stars off the show, so they had Austin cut promos, challenge authority, and hit stunners in lieu of taking bumps. Yep. These hell-raising antics only made him a bigger star and had fans chomping at the bit to see him get back in the ring and win the WWE title. Which Num was very smart of them. They just had him in segments that didn't require him to actually have to get in the ring yet. And it still kept his momentum at that fever pitch, even though he wasn't in the ring. 
Number one, Becky Lynch. Oh, it would yeah. be unfair to call Becky Lynch an this overnight star, Good, but the visual of her bloody spot. face after getting punched by Nia Jax at the end of the November 12th, 2018 episode of Raw was her Austin 316 moment, Facts. transforming the SmackDown Women's Champion from a superstar into a megastar. Yep. The man was scheduled to clash with Raw Women's Champion Ronda Rousey in an interbrand battle at Survivor Series six days later when she caught a stiff one from Nia during the big melee sustaining a busted nose and a nasty concussion. The upshot was she was replaced in the bout by Charlotte Flair, mm -hmm. which the Queen lost via DQ. There is no doubt that Becky would have done the honours in some form or fashion for the undefeated Rowdy Ronda, so her being pulled from the match was like a stay of execution and protected her from a potentially yeah. momentum halting loss. Lynch being taken out of the bout, coupled with her iconic glare after being smacked by Nia, was the catalyst for a run to the first ever women's WrestleMania main event and a major victory over Flair and Rousey in a historic unification match. The the pain was temporary, but Becky's injury led to moments that will last forever. And you know what's crazy about that whole situation is the fact that her getting injured saved her momentum. Her getting punched in the face, bloodied up, and still out there looking like a complete savage, not doing the job to Ronda, not losing to Ronda, it, it ultimately helped. Because if she would have had to have that match. She probably would have had to lose. She was going to lose to Ronda. So this worked out probably. There's no better way this could have possibly worked out. Unfortunately, she had to get injured for it. But ultimately, she ended up being protected. And she became mega over even because of it. So that's the, that's the crazy thing. How sometimes an injury in wrestling can ultimately catapult you or somebody else to that next level you know so you never know but comment down below let me know man what's a moment like a, a i guess you can say a moment you feel like a wrestler ended up benefiting from them getting injured outside of the ones that's that you've seen in this video like because they got injured it ultimately kind of helped them in their overall career going forward either when they came back they became more over or you know it ended up helping somebody else let me know some other wrestlers or moments where they got over because of an injury but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one